In this bubble tutorial video, I'm going to break down my favorite AI web scraping technique so that you can take a URL just like this. It's a job listing uh, and you can extract out of it core bits of data by getting a structured JSON response back from an AI. In this case, we're using uh, Anthropics Claude. Uh, but so we're getting closing date, contract term and salary. Let's have a look back at the original post. Here we go. So we're extracting the contract. Uh, term from here, closing date, we're asking the AI to restructure that date and we're taking the salary. Now the salary, this is the perfect example of why using an AI in combination with uh, a web scraper is really handy because we can't just say take the number after salary. We have to, we're using the AI's intelligence to judge what bit of text to scrape and we're using it to reformat the date. So let's go back to our example. We've reformatted the date and we've also got the salary and it happens to have picked the, the lower end, but we could of course improve our prompt uh, to make that better. But before I dive into that, have you checked out our website? There is a link down in the description because as of this point of recording, we've got 351 bubble tutorial videos accessible through our website, some of which are exclusive to our paid members. What do our members get? They get access to all of our videos that we've ever recorded. They get access to a no code community and our courses, we've got more courses on the way. Currently we've got build your own chat GPT clone course and I'm working on a bubble essentials course which is expected to be published in just a few weeks. And you can get access to all of that by becoming a Planet No Code member and clicking that link down in the description to get started. So we're gonna start with our web scraper. Now there are a number of web scrapers that I've used over the years. Page to API is one that I've done previous videos on. Um, but in this case, I'm using a new one that I found only a few weeks ago called Use Scraper. And so what we need to do as a no-code app developer is take their API documentation, which looks like this, and translate it into our bubble app. So we need to have an understanding of what's going on here and, and take this, what is code? Yeah, it's no code, but it's code. Uh, and put it into our bubble API connector. So we can see that the destination of where we're gonna send data to uh, is going to be uh, this URL here, this endpoint. It needs to be a post request. We need to auth we need authorization, our API token, our API key in the header. Um, in the data section, we need to send across the URL we wish to scrape and the format. And this is a really common layout for most API documentation because if I scroll down, it tells us exactly what we can swap in and out. So we can say, uh, I want the results in Markdown. That's what I'm gonna go for. Um, and if I go back into our bubble editor, uh, I'm in plugins. I've added in the API connector. You can get that by just clicking add plugins if you're completely new to bubble. Uh, and then I've added in an API. And so I've labeled it use scraper and I'm saying private key in header, authorization, and then in that box, which I've blurred out, I've got um, my bearer. Why have I got bearer? Well, let's just have a look. Uh, I've got to put the word bearer in front of my token. Okay, and then I've added an API call, and I've labeled this scrape web page in Markdown. I've set it as an action because I want to run this in a workflow. And then I say, well, it's a post, and it goes to that endpoint, which I highlighted in the documentation just a moment ago. And then in body, all I've done is paste uh, everything within the opening speech marks there. Let's copy that, paste it in there. And then Bubble allows me to insert dynamic values into the code. Uh, so I've opened up triangle brackets and I've created like a merge field or a merge tag, called it URL. That then opens up this box down here and I've put in the URL of the job posting just down here and I've unchecked it from private because uh, this is data that my users can have access to. The flip side of that is my API key. I need to ensure that that is marked as a private key and header because I don't want my Bubble App users to have access to my private key. I've then initialized it, and in fact, let's run this and let's see what happens. So it's scraped the web page, and we then get back this text section here. And so this is the markdown 
of the web page containing all of those bits of vital details. Now it's unstructured here and it's a mess and that's where we're going to use the LLM, uh, the large language model and in this case we're using Claude, that's where we're going to use Claude to tidy it up. So I've scrolled up because we need to make a, another API connection and this time we're connecting to Anthropic's Claude which if you haven't checked it out is really worthwhile. You may have heard of OpenAI, uh, GPT-4.0, very popular at the moment. Well, Claude is the hottest LLM of the week, it changes every week, doesn't it? Uh, and the reason I'm using Claude is because Claude makes it very easy to get structured data back. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to explain. Um, oh, let's get rid of that. I'm going to explain every step of this as I go. But right now, if I click initialize, we get back structured content. And it isn't just your regular chat message from an LLM, it is particular fields. So we get back uh, these fields here. It's probably easier if I go down to raw data. Here we go. Uh, so we get back our closing date our contract term and our salary. Again, it's not a chat message, it's structured JSON. And this is what makes it so easy now in the bubble app to say display closing date or display contract term. I'm not having to, uh, I'm not getting back a, here is your job advert, uh, here are the fields and having to then manually extract it out. It's just not as reliable as it could be. I'm getting back structured JSON data. Uh, I'm gonna click save there. So let me explain what's going on here. Well, firstly, this is a fairly standard, the top half of here, set up for making an API call to Claude. Now we've got many videos on OpenAI at Claude and indeed the Bubble API connector that you can check out, but I will explain some of it briefly. So uh, label it uh, Claude, private key and header, and I've done the same thing with the Claude API documentation. I've translated it into my Bubble app. So instead of authorization, they want X API key. They want this additional shared header of the Anthropic version. We are then making a request, the post request to this endpoint, it's set as action. Now, let me break this bit down for you and I think it's easier to show you if I go over to this view. So if I collapse tools uh, and then tool choices, this looks fairly familiar if you've ever worked with Claude. I'm saying use this model, maximum tokens, and then all I'm saying is, uh, what have I got down there? Why have I said messages? Test. Oh, that, yeah, we've just got a single message in place there. Now, it's the tool function or function calling, as you, if you're coming from OpenAI, uh, that makes it possible to get back a structured JSON response. Let's break it down. So I have tools and then I open up this JSON object and I give it a name, extract job details. I'm just giving it a sensible name for myself. And then I describe it. And it is important what words you choose here because you are trying to, to nudge the AI in the right direction using kind of human, readable, understandable terms. Uh, so I'm saying extract job details from a job advert using well-structured JSON. I then have another, uh, part, another parameter in the JSON and I say input schema. And uh, I then say it's an object and properties. Now this is where it really matters. So if I close that within properties, here is where I'm defining the different fields, parameters that I want back from uh, Claude. And so I'm saying get the closing date, it's type of string, it's description. I'm saying the closing date of the job application and then I'm dictating the format that I want the reply. And then basically you do the same thing for the others. I say contract term uh, and then I give a description again Prompt engineering is at work here. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for the LLM, for Claude, to understand what I mean and what to extract. I then mark them all down here as required, uh, and I say uh, tool choice, type tool, uh, name, and then this name has to match what I put up here. And uh, what we've got here between line 32 and 35 is described in the Claude documentation as our way of saying, we don't want a chat message or a mix of chat and JSON back. We just want the output of the tool as we've described higher up in the prompt. Now I'm gonna just go into the Claude API documentation and show you how I've built this. And, and so you can kind of start from the, the right foundation uh, and add your own parameters in. 
I think this page here is the most helpful breakdown of how to insert a tool into your uh, Claude API request. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice that this part here is very similar to what I've got in the API connector. And so all I've done is expanded on the property fields here. So at the moment it's saying location. And then I've just added in, if I go back to the editor, um, in fact, let me go back to that uh, beautified JSON. Uh, so yeah, we've got properties and I've just added in the closing date, contract term and salary. Uh, but you can see that the lines 11 through to 20, uh, 23 um, are effectively what you have here. So I'd advise that you start with here, you start with this bit of code, you copy this into your bubble API connector, uh, and then you start adding in your additional properties. Now I've, I found in, in kind of debugging my own errors with using JSON that a JSON validator was very helpful because I would miss a comma or a speech mark there and or I wouldn't close some curly braces. When you're working with JSON, it's so it's, it's a very sensitive syntax. If you make a mistake, it's you're gonna get an error. So I'm, I made my mistake was just adding in six different properties all in one go and then running it and realizing I've made a mistake in one. So I would really build this in bubble in a manner of add something in, test it, add in a little bit more, test it again. Um, so how does this all plug into bubble? Well, if I go back into my page, uh, I've got a input here, I've got a button, and I've got a text label. Let me break that down for you. My only workflow on the page is on the button, and I'm gonna say edit workflow to view it. So what I've got here is I've got use web scraper, and this is that first API call we looked at. And the way I get to that, once I've initialized it all through the bubble API connector, is I can either search for it here, or uh, it's gonna be under plugins. And there's a lot going on here because this is a demo app that I've built loads of different uh, examples with and tutorials. Uh, so where is it? There we go, I, I click that in, I add it in. Now notice, here's an easy mistake to make, that uh, I have speech marks around it and that's because I've just got in the habit of marking everything as JSON safe. We've got many videos demonstrating exactly what this does, but it means that any punctuation is made JSON safe, so you're not gonna get a JSON syntax error. It also means that everything in that is wrapped in speech marks. So uh, that's why I've got JSON safe there, because it's taking the input, which is a URL, and it's wrapping it in speech marks. I'm then taking the output of step one and placing it into step two, which is again, another call through the API that I des described and demonstrated in the API connector, which is I extract data from a uh, web page with AI. Once more, I'm wrapping it all in format as JSON safe, just to be on the safe side. Uh, and then within arbitrary text, and arbitrary text is a great way of grouping together text and applying a modifier like formatted as JSON safe to the whole thing. I've got my prompt in here. So I'm saying here is a job advert in markdown, extract the, the contract term and closing date. Now I, I could expand upon that, I could make the prompt better. Um, I'm using XLM tags, that's advised in the Claude documentation. So I'm, doesn't, there's nothing special about the term instructions, apart from the fact that it is quite instructive about what's going on bet between uh, the instruction tags. And then I've got the web page, and I'm simply saying the text output of the result of step one. So my markdown web page is going in between these two tags. I then need a way of displaying it on my page. Now I'm not saving it to the bubble database, I'm using custom states. And custom states are temporary storage. If a user refreshes the page, the data is lost. To set up the custom states, I've just gone onto the page. Custom states can be added to any element in the bubble design view, but I tend to add them to the pages so I don't forget where they are. And I add in a new custom state here, and so I've got closing date text, contract term text, and salary as a number. I then just need to save the text, uh, the data that's responded from the AI into those custom states, and I simply refer back to the custom state. So here is, let me do this last one for salary for you again. Uh, so let's go all the way back. So I say insert dynamic data, I find my page element, and then here are my custom states. So this is salary, perfect. Uh, so go back into, back into the workflow, 
I then set my custom states. And so in bubble, you use the set date, uh, set state on element action. Uh, and so I select my element, which is my page. I select the custom state I want to save data to. And then, again, let me just break one of these down. So I say the results of step two, which is the, the Claude API call, content. And then most AI models are set so that you can ask for more than one version. Now we've only asked for one version of the response, but it still returns it like a list in JSON. So I, there is only one item here, but I'm just gonna say first item because I have to pick an item from the list. And then I get back uh, all of these fields here. And these are the ones that I set up as part of the Claude API connection. And I'm gonna say uh, closing date. So let's go back, having deconstructed that, and broken down all of the elements that go into this AI web scraping tool. And I'm gonna say extract structured data. Now Bubble is running that workflow. It's first extracting the markdown from the page. It's then passing that markdown onto Claude and it's allowing me to ex uh, express these individual fields, have this structured JSON data. This is a real game changer in my opinion. As far as I'm aware, you can't do exactly the same thing with OpenAI. There is JSON mode, but Bubble doesn't treat it as JSON. You, you have to jump through a load of additional hoops to use it that way. You could also use a service like Use Plum. We've got videos on Plum uh, in earlier uh, tutorials, uh, which is really helpful at linking together multiple uh, AI uh, actions. Um, they've got a really helpful pipeline builder and a way of further expressing JSON um, as a, a structured extraction from uh, some text. Uh, but yeah, this is my favorite at the moment. It's to use Claude and it's to use their tools to get structured data back from their AI model.